Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding General of the 82nd Airborne Division, Major General Christopher Leneve, and the Division Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major David Pitt, paratroopers past and present, welcome to the 82nd Airborne Division's 2022 Memorial Ceremony. The Color Guard, Firing Party, and Ushers for today's ceremony are from the 3rd Brigade Combat Team. Please rise for the arrival of the colors and remain standing for the playing of the National Anthem by the 82nd Airborne Division Band and the invocation by the 82nd Airborne Division Chaplain, Lieutenant Colonel Spicer. Pray with me, please. Father, we know that the unfortunate cost in the fight for freedom is life. For the families of those who have lost loved ones, provide the daily comfort that they need for their mourning. For those who serve, let us never forget their sacrifice so that we can pay tribute to them by living our lives with purpose and honoring our fallen comrades. Father, we pray for peace and the end of tyranny. We ask this with thanksgiving all the way. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to take a moment to recognize our distinguished guests in attendance today. Accompanying our host, Major General Christopher Leneve, is his wife, Kim. Also attending today's ceremony are several former 82nd Division Commanding Generals. Please welcome General Dan McNeil and his wife, Maureen. General retired Curtis Scaparotti and his wife, Cindy. General retired David Rodriguez and his wife, Ginny. Lieutenant General retired Keith Kellogg and his wife, Paige. Lieutenant General retired George Crocker and his wife, Vonda. Let us also give a round of applause to all of the Gold Star families, Hall of Fame inductees, and other distinguished guests joining us today. Today, we will lay three wreaths to honor the fallen paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division. Sergeant Jackson and Sergeant Miller will lay a wreath in honor of the two paratroopers who gave their lives preparing for combat operations. 
we will lay the first wreath on the Preparing for Combat Memorial. The 82nd Airborne Division Association will lay the second wreath on the division memorial honoring the over 5,000 All-Americans who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom and the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1917, the All-American Division was formed for entry into World War I and has served in virtually every major conflict since. Captain Jewett Williams, killed in France on June 9, 1918, was the first All-American killed in combat for our nation. Sergeant Brian Mount, killed on 21 July 2020, was the last. 5,089 All-Americans have been killed during our history. At this time, nine current and former paratroopers representing major conflicts in which fellow paratroopers have perished will place a wreath at the division memorial. The paratrooper laying the division wreath today is the NCO of the year from the 82nd Airborne Division, Sergeant First Class Baldwin from Charlie Troop 173 Cav. Representing the soldiers from the American Expeditionary Force in World War I is the NCO of the Year from the 82nd Airborne Division. The division fought in the Lorraine, Saint Michel, and Musée Argonne campaigns, suffering 1,298 casualties while contributing to the defeat of the German Army in France. Representing paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division in World War II is First Sergeant Retired Clifford Stump. The division led the assaults against Axis forces at Sicily, Salerno, Normandy, and Holland. The 82nd Airborne Division blunted German attacks during the Battle of the Bulge and captured the 21st German Army at the end of the Central European Campaign. During 442 days of combat, the All-Americans suffered more than 18,000 casualties, including 3,228 deaths. Representing the paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division in the Dominican Republic is Mr. Walter Rauscher. In April 1965, the All-Americans were alerted in response to the Civil War raging in the Dominican Republic. Spearheaded by the 3rd Brigade, the 82nd deployed to the Caribbean. Peace and stability were restored when the rebel guns were silenced. The All-American Division set the conditions for free and open democratic elections in the Dominican Republic. Representing the paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division who served in Vietnam is Sergeant Retired Philip Cronin. The division's 3rd Brigade was deployed to Chu Lai in February 1968 in response to the Tet Offensive, which swept across the Republic of Vietnam. The brigade performed combat duties in the first corps sector of the Wei Fu Bai area. Later, the brigade was moved south of Saigon, fighting battles in the Delta, the Iron Triangle, and along the Cambodian border. After ser serving nearly 22 months in Vietnam, the Golden Brigade paratroopers returned to Fort Bragg on December 12, 1969. Representing the paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division who served in Grenada is First Sergeant Retired Michael Osh. In October 1983, the division sent forces to the Caribbean island of Grenada to rescue American citizens and help restore order. Division paratroopers quickly suppressed communist hostile fire while capturing many Cuban soldiers and vast stocks of Soviet supplied weapons and munition. Division units redeployed to Fort Bragg in late December 1983. Representing the paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division in Panama is Mr. Steve Copening.
On December 20, 1989, the 82nd conducted its first combat parachute assault since World War II in Totorios International Airport, Panama, as part of the Operation Just Cause to oust that country's dictator. After the night airborne insertion and seizure of the International Airport, the 82nd conducted combat air assault missions throughout the country. The All-Americans returned to Fort Bragg on January 12, 1990. Representing the paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division in Southwest Asia is Command Sergeant Major Retired Stephen England. The division deployed to Saudi Arabia on August 8, 1990 to deter further aggression by Iraqi armed forces. During the 100-hour ground war, the 82nd drove deep into Iraq, capturing thousands of Iraqi soldiers and tons of equipment, weapons, and ammunition. After the liberation of Kuwait, the 82nd redeployed to Fort Bragg by the end of April 1991. Representing the paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division in Operation Enduring Freedom is Command Sergeant Major Retired Thomas Capel. The division deployed to Afghanistan on June 24, 2002 in response to the terrorist threat worldwide and have conducted combat operations in Afghanistan on multiple deployments in over the last 20 years. Representing the paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division in Operation Iraqi Freedom is First Sergeant Retired Maggie Peppers. In February of 2003, the division, the division deployed to Kuwait in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. The division conducted combat operations throughout Iraq until 2017. At this time, if PAO would like to come forward and take some photos. Thank you. Thank you. You may return to your seats. In addition to the division wreath, a representative from the Golden Brigade will place the wreath at the Vietnam Memorial in honor of the sacrifices made by the brigade in those campaigns. Laying the Golden Gate Br Brigade wreath for the Vietnam campaign today is Command Sergeant Major Retired Claude Dunn and Command Sergeant Major Miguel Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in observing a moment of silence in honor of those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Ladies and gentlemen, the 82nd Airborne Division Chorus will now sing Requiem for a Soldier and If Not Me. Sure. 
shining dream of hope and love, life and liberty, with a host of brave unknown soldiers for your company. You will live of sacrifice. Heroes paid the price. Young men who died for old men's wars, gone to And one day you'll see we can live together when all the world is free. I wish you lived to see all you gave. shining dream of hope and love, life and liberty. We are all one great band of brothers, and one day you'll see we can live for two.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sergeant Retired Philip Cronin, veteran of the Golden Brigade. The Golden Brigade answered General Westmoreland's call to reinforce his troops to defeat the NBA in the VC offense. The airborne troopers loaded aboard aircraft without reservations, even though the majority had already served in Vietnam in combat and returned home. Some were home with less than a year. Back in country, the veterans took the new troopers that had never served in combat under their wings and taught them the way of the enemy. For 22 months, from Way to Baston and Bastogne to Saigon, these men excelled in their operations. In the end, they carried 227 friends and comrades from the field of battle. Their names are etched on the monument over here. God bless them and keep them forever. And God bless the 82nd Airborne. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Major General Christopher Leneve, Commanding General of the 82nd Airborne Division. Well, first off, thank you all for coming. It's a solemn uh, ceremony, um, and it's great to have you all here. There's, there's legends among us today, legends for Kim and I, legends of this division. We have Gold Star family members here, and we have uh, some that have traveled all the way from France. Maurice Renault, son of uh, you know, the famous father who uh, was the mayor of St. Mary Glees, where some say the division cut its teeth during World War II. It's an honor to have you with us today. So family and friends. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Gold Star families, thank you for attending our memorial ceremony, honoring these brave paratroopers who made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation and for us. For the past 105 years, paratroopers from this division have stood in the breach between darkness and light and answered our nation's call. Our performance in every major conflict was only possible because of the spirit of the American paratrooper, their willingness to put their life in jeopardy for their country, for their allies, for their unit, and for each other. Some came home, and others, unfortunately, did not. This hallowed ground we stand on, and these names etched in stone, is a testimony to the price of answering the call to preserve our freedoms and our way of life. See, freedom is a word that has been paid for by the blood of normal humans, that when called to serve, do superhuman things for their friends, their family, and their country. Captain Jewett Williams was 31 years old 
when he became the first casualty of war for the 82nd Airborne Division. He was killed in action during World War I in Albert, France on June 9, 1918. He was a son. <laughs> a husband. And a father to a five-month-old. Sergeant Brian Mount was 25 years old when he became the last killed in combat during Operation Resolute Support in Syria on 21 July 2020. He was a son, a brother, and he was a husband. There are 5,089 names eternalized on the memorial between these two paratroopers. The remembrance of these paratroopers and adherence to the traditions that they set forth is our connection to the bravery, to the courage, to the valor, and the sacrifice of these giants upon whose shoulders we stand. We will never tarnish their memory or discard the traditions of these patriots whose names are chiseled here in rock and forever etched on our souls. They are our foundation, our paratroopers, and our friends. They both loved and were loved. They're the true heroes of our nation and the reason we gather each year to celebrate their willingness to put their life in jeopardy. We celebrate this division and most importantly, to celebrate their lives and contribute uh, and contribution to the long historic legacy of the iconic patch we wear on our shoulder and in our hearts. We cannot forget that our business of preparing for combat and the harshness of it isn't without intense, intense risk and cost. You see, the division has paid another price for freedom, and it's the loss of our brothers and sisters while preparing for war. We never forget these losses. And since 1942, we know of 350 deaths while preparing for war. Yet there are only 250 known names engraved here. The division and the museum continues to work tirelessly to uncover the story of those paratroopers and immortalize them here. Today, we add one of those names, Sergeant Nikolai Cabrera from the 325th Parachute Infantry Regiment who was killed in 1969 at the age of 42. Sergeant Cabrera served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. He died here by throwing himself on a grenade while in training. In doing so, he saved the life of Specialist Hubert Charles Jr. Specialist Charles served during Vietnam and left the Army in 1970. He currently resides in his hometown of Dublin, Georgia, and we spoke with Mr. Charles last week. He remembers waking up in the hospital after the incident with his then-girlfriend, Patricia. He recalled the event with amazing detail and clarity and attest that he would not be alive today if it was not for Sergeant Cabrera. He and his former girlfriend, Patricia, just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. They have two children, five grandchildren, from ages one to 14. They couldn't make it today, but their story is a testament of the impact our heroes have every day both in war and at home. Those grandchildren wouldn't have been possible without Sergeant Cabrera. It's with a heavy heart that we add a second name today, Specialist Luis Herrera of the 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment. He was 23 years old when his vehicle rode over here at Fort Bragg on 28 April 2022. He was a son, a brother, and a husband, and this loss is devastating. The loss of these paratroopers here 
at home is just as impactful on distant fields and in places like Lafayette Causeway or the jungles of Vietnam or Panama. From World War I to Korea to Iraq or Afghanistan, the division hasn't changed. It has and will continue to answer the call with eagerness and uncompromising determination. We are all Americans because of the legacy that was paid for with their courage and sacrifice. We've set aside this hallowed ground on the legendary Ardennes Street. It is here where we sit today, where silence and reverence is automatic and demands our remembrance of the price that was paid. Every one of them was either a son or a daughter, a husband or a wife, a brother or a sister, a mother or a father. They are just like us. Their valor is representative of the price of freedom. The grief of those who survived them is the burdensome cost. Our remembered service and commitment to their legacy is a debt we owe them. The paratroopers in this division today are no different than Captain Williams, Sergeant Mount, Sergeant Cabrera, and Specialist Herrera. They just don't realize that when they wake up in the morning and look in the mirror, an American hero is looking back at them. They'll show up for formation, they'll do PT, they'll prepare their gear, they'll hone their craft, they'll jump, assemble, or support those on the drop zone. And when the nation calls, they will fight like hell for our country, what we stand for, and each other. We all are all Americans. And I pray with everything in me as All American Six that after answering that call, we never have to etch another name on these stones. And I pray our training is enough so that we all come home. God bless you all, airborne all the way. We would like to recognize the following paratroopers whose names were added to the combat training memorial this year. Sergeant Nicholas Cabrera, who died in 1969, and Specialist Luis Herrera, who died in 2022. At this time, we would like the first row of Gold Star family members and family members of paratroopers killed in training to rise and follow the ushers to the respective memorials.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the benediction and the rendering of honors. Let us pray. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you the peace that we all deserve. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. Please allow time for the family members of our fallen heroes to visit the memorials. Thank you for attending today's memorial ceremony. Airborne, all the way. That's happening. It's all right? It's all. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you.